Welcome to our worship service on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost here at San Albans. We are grateful that you have chosen to, to worship with us today. Now, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Moses said, So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord.
Reading from the Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and blessings to you this morning. A couple of years ago, I came across an article written in 1990 by David Steindl Rast called The Mystical Core of Organized Religion. It's a brief and brilliant essay that argues that at the foundation of all religions is a mystical experience of truth, goodness, and beauty and that the hope of all faith and all religion is that the heart of our religion becomes the religion of our hearts. And over time, and as our intellect, our will, and our emotions inevitably process and try to preserve the mystical, the basic elements of religion, doctrine, ethics, and ritual are thus born. Over time and under the influence of our historical developments and circumstances, our doctrines eventually morph into dogmatism. Our ethics devolve into legalism and our rituals turn into ritualism. We imagine less and obey more. We start to color inside the lines. We think and act only according to the rules that have been handed down to us. Now, I should tell you now that I'm experiencing something like a conundrum this morning because the passage that we have just heard from chapter 7 in the Gospel according to Mark is part one of a two-part story that will continue next Sunday. The story begins when Jesus and his disciples are joined by a group of Pharisees and scribes. A debate between Jesus and the Pharisees quickly ensues after the Pharisees observe that some of Jesus' followers are eating without washing their hands. But this is not an argument about hygiene. According to the Pharisees, Jesus' disciples are not following the tradition of the elders, and by eating with defiled hands, they are digesting food that will result in ritual impurity. We should note here that it is only some of Jesus' followers who are not following the tradition of the elders, and perhaps more important, the accusation of defilement is leveled at Jesus' followers. Not at Jesus himself. Not yet, anyway. 
Those accusations will come later, of course, but it's a curious detail that allows us to conclude that what is happening here is only the beginning of the Pharisees questioning about Jesus' own understanding of what is clean and unclean. And it's a question more profoundly about what it means to be considered holy, about what or who is holy and who or what is not. Unholy and therefore undeserving, we might say. You'll have to tune in next week for part two of the story, which gets even juicier. And when the words of Jesus, the words that Jesus will utter, will sound more righteous than the Pharisees, revealing an evolution of Jesus' own understanding of the boundless love of God. Spoiler alert here, thanks to a woman, he'll get over it. But for now, and trying to stay in the lane that we've been given today, Jesus responds to the accusation by the Pharisees that his followers are not adhering to Israel's purity regulations, which have come via the Pharisees' interpretation of divine law with a keen irony. He quotes from the book of Isaiah, the prophet who denounced the Israelites for honoring God with their lips and not with their lives. In effect, worshiping Yahweh in vain and teaching human precepts as doctrine while abandoning the commandments of God. A faithful rendering of Jesus' response to the accusation by the Pharisees might go something like this. <clears throat> you do know that it's not so much what goes into a person that defiles them as much as what comes out, right? Jesus deflects the Pharisees' charge about his followers by contrasting their key word, tradition, with the truer call to obey the commandments of God, not religious tradition. To be sure, and as the New Testament makes crystal clear, neither Jesus nor his followers step blithely across traditional boundaries of religious thought and practice, and neither should we. In the book of Acts, Peter, who is criticized by his companions in faith for eating with the uncircumcised, explains that his own choice to violate tradition came because of a rooftop vision in Jaffa and resulted in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on a Roman household. What? You ate with the Romans? What were you thinking? But because of that vision, and for Peter, Jews were no longer clearly marked off from Gentiles, something that threatened the very identity of the circumcised as being the chosen people of God, the Holy Ones. It's hard for us to understand the magnitude of the revelation Peter experienced and even harder to understand how what sounds like common sense can be so threatening to the faithful. Perhaps it's helpful here to remember the not-so-distant past when, according to our own tradition, our sexual identity prevented a whole host of people from being ordained as ministers or pastors in our church, a reality that is alive and well in many Protestant denominations. We should also note that neither the Roman or the Orthodox churches have come to accept that sexuality and gender are irrelevant to the call to proclaim the gospel. This, I think, is what this and next week's readings from the Gospel of Mark compel us to consider and to think about. Mind you, I have no particulars in my own mind here. 
And I am not suggesting that we become, as many like to say these days, spiritual but not religious. I only ask how or in what ways is our faith evolving? What are the traditions we must begin to leave behind? Where or how has our own faith, yours and mine, become hidebound, self-righteous, unwilling or resistant to change, clinging to tradition and convention? Who is welcome at our tables? Where do we draw our own lines when it comes to our compassionate response to the needs of the world? And when might our pragmatic sense of self-preservation as the church and as individuals outweigh God's call to be holy? In the hope that the heart of our religion might become the religion of our hearts, perhaps we shall conclude our service this homily where today's service began, the collect of the day. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the Spirit for the needs and concerns of all God's people, saying, God of love, God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Marianne, our bishop, that our minds and hearts may receive spirit and life through the gospel of Christ. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For this parish family, that we who have come to know and believe in Christ, may honor God with our lips and our hearts, showing forth in our lives what we profess by our faith. God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer for the leaders of nations, that they may seek to walk with God and proclaim in word and deed the messages of justice and peace. May the spirit inspire all human hearts to turn from violence and work together to defeat the common enemies of disease, ignorance, and poverty. God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the people of Cuba, Haiti, and all those with desperate need. For the people of Afghanistan, and the many who are vulnerable and endangered, that ways will be found to save human lives, protect human rights, and aid all those seeking refuge asylum and safety. May we see and hear them and respond with compassion, wisdom, and generosity. God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are needy, lonely, brokenhearted, and forgotten, for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially Mark Miller, Roger Kirk, Paul Delaney, Phyllis Oakley, Gordon Avery, the King family, Kate Wallace, Jerry Gerard and family, Marina Bueller Miko, Barbara Witten, Yoshinobu Mayahira, Sandra Lofton, Pam Burns, and the Reverend Paula Clark and family, that God will provide healing and renewal in their lives. God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer for all those across the world threatened by fire, flood, earthquakes, war, and pandemic. 
that God will keep them safe and give them hope for those who have died, remembering especially Kathleen Lightsey and Kate Bouvet, that they may rest from their labors and find everlasting peace. God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary, the God bearer, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ, God of love, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, in whom there is no variance or no shadow, hear the prayers we offer this day and inspire us to be doers of your word. May we be instruments of reconciliation and peace. All this we ask in the power of your spirit and through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 Praying in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned in thought, thought word, and deed. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. Welcome you all who are watching from home, especially those who are joining us for the first time. In the description beneath this video in YouTube, you will see a link to our parish welcome card. We will be delighted to know more from you and to see how we can accompany you in your journey of faith. Following this recording, you will also see an opportunity to make a financial offering to support the ongoing ministries of our parish in the neighborhood, in the city, in the country and around the world. Thank you for your generosity. Also, we continue during this month having a mustard seed collection of medicines and money to support the people in Cuba. Uh, if you want to know more about this, you can find more information in our email and website. You can also contact um, me through, your, through my email to know more about this opportunity. And now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life, life and labor to the Lord.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.